Good afternoon, Internet. We are coming to you from sunny Southern California. Balmy 82 degrees and about 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, Today uh, we're going to do a pigment, uh, the uh, French pigment, made in France, and uh, it's got it in the title, French Ultramarine Blue. Now, um, if it is true to what we all know about French Ultramarine Blue, is that it is granulating. So, if this is the right stuff, we expect no less than a really nice grad granulation. So, the pigment is from Sennelier, which you that, uh, and they're from France. And this product is for export to the United States only. Um, and I don't know why that would be. <laughs> mm. Anyway, uh, so we're going to go on with the show. And I am going to make just one batch where we have one part pigment, four parts um, gum arabic, and one part glycerin. And um, I think I'm going to use two uh, tenths of a milliliter of oxgall. Anyway, uh, and so let's get on with the show. Here's our wow. They sealed this up. They probably got a safety data sheet on it somewhere in five with the. Uh, OSHA. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so. And my favorite spoon. Jeez, it's getting nasty looking. Well, it gives whatever I use character. Okay, I've probably got just a little bit um full of a teaspoon. See if I can get it back in the container. No. Wow. Oh. And as you can see, <laughs> it's a really powder. Okay, and so we're going to close up the container because it's windy today too, so we don't want any of it to blow away. Alright, and so the next thing I'm going to do is use four teaspoons of acacia. Oh, I think I better put this one on. Uh, the Acacia Senegal powder, which um, is the only ingredient in gum arabic, but um, uh, there is another acacia tree, and I, I don't know where that is, but um, because on the, the bottle that we get from Windsor Newton, it has two species of acacia trees that their gum arabic comes from so i guess whatever is cheaper uh, i would say is what they're going to use now this was actually pretty cheap um i think this cost twelve dollars for a pound Powdered gum Arabic. Hmm, that's getting nice. 
Mixer, but yeah, we need this. Got some. Oh no, it's it's nasty. Using my water pick to clean brushes and whatever. It's kind of like uh, having my own power washer um, for cleaning brushes. See if that got any better. housekeeping but this is after all cinema verite or at least the way I do what it is um, and there's number two number three Teaspoon number four or part number four. This is uh, this acacia uh, Senegal powder uh, or gum Arabic as we all call it um, is food grade. So if I quit using it to Oh, and be a fan of the shirt. <laughs> if I quit using it to mix, make uh, paint with, I can put it in my smoothies to thicken them up. Make a smoothie about the thickness of a McDonald's shake. But much more reliable than their ice cream machines are. They're <laughs> All you need is a blender. Okay, we've uh, mixed all of the dry ingredients. And now we're about to put in the glycerin. And again, one part glycerin, and I keep forgetting to shut uh, the lid. What happened? Lid of the kitchen. Throw it upside down. Okay. No? Maybe it explains why I always have the lid open. Oh, well, it smells now. Okay, this looks like it would fit this way. Okay, I got the lid working. Got it closed, now I can get it open again. Oh, maybe that's why I always leave it open. Yeah, well. In the future, I won't complain that I hadn't left it open. I want to well, I can cut myself too. I'm supposed to be able to push down and the thing pop up.
Well, they're having a malfunction. And so who needs a pour herb? We, we got the bottle. Okay, there's my uh, one part of glycerin. And now, let's add the ox gall. Here's the ox gall. And it's from Windsor Newton. And I don't know much about ox gall, but I'm pretty sure that vegans wouldn't approve of it because it would otherwise say synthetic ox gall. And I don't know if I'm going to... When I get done with this, uh, empty this one, and you don't use very much of it, There it is. Okay, here's my syringe in which I'm just going to go and use two tenths of a milliliter. Okay, at that rate, two tenths of a milliliter. I've got an ox gall here. That ox gall is a spreading agent, so it allows the um, paint to spread more easily and it slows up the effects of um, the main ingredient of the pigment, gum arabic, as, as of the paint. So you can see we need water. But the uh, Arabic attracts moisture and soaks it up. That's why it's a thickening agent for cooking. Um, wow, that's pretty. I would have expected no less. Oh, there's more water. We're cooking now. And now the convenient thing of buying your pigments that are granulated is you can do it like this. You don't need a pestle and mortar. You don't need to grind the pigment. Pigment is already good. I mean, people that buy these pigments from these, I don't know why, two Maybe all three of the pigment manufacturers are using, or paint manufacturers that I use, two of them, um, they are probably all using the same um, suppliers and come, and they're likely to be from France. French have a long history and watercolor. Uh, the earliest and paper, that watercolor paper. So, but I believe it was 1492 that the French started producing watercolor paper. Pretty obviously they were also producing watercolor paint and um, and it, it, it seems that uh, the paint names that we use will have a French word. Many have a French word. Anyway, so well, you know that's. Um, I just made one batch, and you know that that's a pretty pretty bun big bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, the, the total. Of course, is about um, I don't know about 20 grams. Of, oh wow! Wait, wait! I got a 
much scale. I'll tell you how many grams it is on and uh, here. Stop moving. Well, here just keeps bouncing around and I think that's because of the slight wind that we have. Okay. Um, well, we're gonna, we could be off by the amount of grams. scale will only go to 20 grams. Oh, should have known that. Twenty grams. Use the scale to make my own capsules. Of course. Make my own capsules of something. Um medicine. Actually it's uh, Something to help me sleep. Alright, now I, I just think that's a little too thick. And since we're going to use it from the pan directly, you mix it and it is the. and cook it all up and it's the serving dish. This is very thick and it seems to be about the consistency of what you would use for watercolors. So, you know, if I uh, want to, I can fill my water, my half pans, uh, and make my own watercolor set. But I'm pretty sure if I leave this out open for a period of time, it will revert. I'm going to clean up a previous project in which we used regular ultramarine blue, not the French ultramarine blue. Well, that's a good one to go close. Very sticky. I think uh, some of these pigments I actually did add honey uh, and I really don't like it. Uh, it attracts there it goes. It attracts ants. I just hate ants. Um, and uh, considering they outweigh humans on this planet, we should develop a relationship with ants. They're very social animals. Now, anyway, this is an old ultramarine blue pigment that I had laid out here. So I'm going to wipe it up. I don't want to contaminate the results. So, we are set to begin. These are like uh, 50 cents a tin. I'll get the link to them down below in my description. on 90 pound uh, let's see 90 pound uh, Fabriano Studio uh, tablet 20% cotton and now when I have to leave um, this usually tries to go away so um, I'm going to take it down if the tape has it,
<coughs> Taped it down to my board. And that will not go away so easily. And then the one side that isn't uh, isn't already glued, I'm going to paint the one remaining side here. And so now I'm ready to test this pigment. Hmm. Okay. So now Seems chunky. It did, you know, almost seems that it's going to be very transparent. It's supposed to be semi-transparent and granulating. So let's I'm going to do wet on wet and wet on dry. So the lower half here is wet. Let's uh, label this so Okay. It, it almost looks like a wash. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. From for French ultramarine blue, maybe we use are using far too much uh, water, or and you know, you had to do it. Anyway, and then I'm going to put it on a little dry. It's a wash. I need to see what it looks like. Uh, it's definitely a wash. Now here is far less water mixed in. And it's thick. Thick like honey. Well, and I didn't put any honey in it, so. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. So let's do some things that will tell us. So we'll put some work here. And I can see it's supposed to be non-staining. I think I think we'll find that it's 
non-staining. The ordinary parameters for French ultramarine are that they are semi-opaque, doesn't look like I have that here, uh, and that they are granulating, and that they are non-staining, or maybe mine is non-staining, and maybe that isn't really a, the correct parameter, but I, I can see I'm lifting the whole thing up, but then again, this is wet, so we will be back in a short time for you, and it's going to be an instant. Um, and we can already see figuring going on a little better. I'm going to take the whole board. No, I can't do that. can do that. So we're going to have it drizzle onto my workspace. And you can see we, we've got some activity. Let's uh, walk away and come back in a few minutes. We're continuing. The paint is dry and we definitely have a, a lot of granulation going on and beautiful little edges that did something for the, and, and and there's actually shininess which I didn't put honey in it, but that would, because, well, I had honey in it, and more of this would be shiny. But this is definitely shiny where it uh, collected. So it's a deep, so according to the definition of Daniel Smith, this is ultramarine blue. It, and actually it might be um, have a, it, it looks like it lifts very well, hardly stains at all, has a granulation, and is semi-transparent. Semi, or did they say semi-opaque? I, I don't know what the difference between those two words is. So, let's, um, let's put a lid on. The French Ultra Marine Blue. French. French. Ultra. I can't spell it unless I say it. Ultra Marine. Sometimes people don't put the blue on the end. They just say ultramarine. But not me. From France. Not just any French ultramarine. Although I suspect they would all have to be from France. 